Hi Compounders, this is our Wednesday video and from now on I think we're going to try to have a video more or less every week on some more general topics instead of doing, for example, three stocks analysis every week because we believe that, you know, it's also important to have a broader understanding of, of some of these concepts that will definitely help us valuing companies better and better in the upcoming months and years. And so this is actually a video and a, and a topic that we have talked about already in the channel with Guy. I think we started when Guy shared that article by Morgan Stanley on the definition of compounders. So you can go and, and watch that video. There are five or six main features that help us in defining what actually a compounder is. And then uh, I think also in the interview with Tom from Investing with Tom, we mentioned another important feature uh, that usually is there when you look at a compounder. And we talked about this video by Terry Smith from, from Fun Smith. And I'm sharing here an excerpt from that video. Um, I'm going to show you two companies and I'm going to show you 10 years of cash returns on capital for them. And I'm going to ask you if you had known at the beginning of that 10 years what those returns were going to be, which company you were going to own. The snappily known company A, these are real companies by the way, you can see between 1987 and 1997 made returns of about 30 to 40% in cash. Okay, so would you like to have owned that or company B, which you can see in the same period made about 15 to 25% returns in cash. So company A or company B? Who wants company A? Right, good, okay. Uh, the rest of you, I take it, one company B, yes? Can I see the company B's just to be sure? I want audience participation here, right? Good, okay. And so as you can see here, Terry is actually asking the crowd which of the two companies they would prefer to invest their money in. And the only thing that is actually sharing to the shareholders is the return on total capital of these two companies. And this is a number that with Guy we, we look at every time that we start valuing a, a company and a, and a business. And so then he asked this question, like if you had, say, now I'm just rephrasing the question, $5,000 and you could only invest this $5,000 in only one company, which company would you invest in? Actually, the question is even trickier because it doesn't mention the name of the companies. It just says company A and company B. And actually, the vast majority of the shareholders says that they would invest in WD-40. And then let's see what Terry Smith says after this poll. Okay. Now, it's an unfair question, of course. I've given you insufficient information to make the decision. So I apologize for the people whose decisions I'm about to criticize because it was a trick question. I didn't give you enough data because I haven't told you whether or not company A and company B can invest each year part of that capital to get that compounding effect. So company A, well, if it was starting with 100 in capital in 1987 and it earned 30, would it be able to earn 35% on 130 the next year or not? I haven't given you that piece of information. That is a vital piece of information. Those of you who selected company A, uh, you selected this company. It's called WD-40. And if you've heard of it at all, it's because you've got an aerosol can of oil somewhere at home. Everybody got one of those? Yeah? Um, if you've got one, you never have to buy another one uh, because it's got an indefinite shelf life, I can tell you. Um, and the only reason you ever buy a second one is if you lose the little straw thing that you have on it that you spray. Um, WD-40 actually stands for Water Disbursement 40th Attempt. It was a, a formulation by a chemist and he took 40 attempts to get the right formulation for it. So that's what the company stands for. Uh, thank God he didn't stop at number 39, I suppose, given the return on capital that it, uh, that it generates. And the WD-40 company is a wonderful little company but it is a little company. It, every year it makes a great return because that is a lovely little product, that aerosol can of oil, but it's actually got a plant that's probably smaller than this room that we're sitting in and it can't invest another dollar each year. So yes, it does make lovely cash returns on capital and the management are good management and perfectly logical. They pay out the cash every year, but it can't ever grow and it can't grow value. It's like a high yield bond. It's not like a real equity. So if you selected company A, you decided to invest in that one. If you rejected company B to go for company A, the company you rejected is that one called Coca-Cola. Now Coca-Cola has got a good but somewhat lower return, but it quite clearly is able to grow its business over time by selling its products into new markets and physically selling more of the products that it sells in order to compound. Um, that's the relative performance of the two companies. The red line is Coca-Cola, the blue line is the WD-40 company. Um, so you need to know not just whether a company can make a high return on capital, but can it reinvest that capital every year? So here Terry is pointing to a, a very important feature that is that 
not all companies have the same reinvestment opportunities. So when you see a high return on total capital, on its own, you don't know if they can continue to reinvest at that return on total capital, the money that, uh, that they make every year. So we covered this feature in detail for Philip Morris, and you can look at that video. The way we approach this is that if the company is paying a big portion of their earnings, then the portion that is reinvested is, is very little. If the quantity that, that you can invest is small, it doesn't really matter if your return on total capital is very high because the, the product of these two quantities will still be small. While in the case of, of Coke, for example, uh, you can reinvest uh, a lot or you could uh, a few decades ago. And so the compounding effect kicks in. So this is very important because in one of the quotes of Charlie Munger, he says that if a company uh, returns 6% on total capital for 40 years, the stock will return 6%. But actually, this is only true if they can reinvest all the earnings. One thing that we are very interested in is to have data going back a few decades where we could check this feature and many other features, for example, the back tests that Joel Greenblatt did to come up with the magic formula. So actually, we have subscriptions to uh, some of the Morningstar research uh, reports and value line reports, but we don't have access to historical data going to the 70s, let's say. And this could be actually very useful for us. And I would think that uh, this would improve also the quality of the discussions on the channel. So we were wondering if it would be a, a good idea to start a Patreon account where we ask for uh, some contribution that we can use to pay services that give us access to very long historical data. Typically, these services are very expensive. Therefore, we would need some kind of help from patrons. Just let us know in the comment below if you think it would improve what we do. Yeah, so the way it would work is that we would create a sort of very simple membership where those of you that want to contribute could contribute. It would probably be something like $2 or $1 a month. Or, I don't know, we have to talk about it with, with Guy and, and we'll see. And then we would be able to pay for these memberships and then offer these kind of backtesting videos where we can actually go and, for example, now look at the Terry Smith video, but then say, okay, wait a second, I'm just going to go and see what actually WD-40 and Coca-Cola were looking like in the 70s, and then understand really quantitatively what Terry Smith has said there, because what he said is, is true, but we don't have the data to actually prove it quantitatively. In the last uh, 15 years, actually, according to the payout ratio, Coke and WD-40 are very similar. So I suspect that in the, in the 80s and 90s, the situation was very different. WD-40 has never had an opportunity to reinvest a lot of capital, but Coke had. Yeah, when Coke was much smaller, so when, uh, when Warren was, uh, was buying it, of course, they were a real compounder. And now they have grown so much that they can't reinvest 100% of their earnings right every year. Yeah, Compounder. So let us know what you think about this. It will definitely be not something that will happen overnight because Guy and I have no experience with patterns. And so we will need to really look into it and see how it actually works. But if you think that for us, having this membership would actually mean that the channel will have more quality content and more quality data to talk about, then you can consider dropping us a comment down below and say, yes, I think it's a good idea or no, I think it's actually a bad idea. We just want to have your feedback exactly because we don't have any experience with, with these kind of things. If you think it's valuable, if you think you would enjoy having these kind of videos like today, us commenting on Terry Smith's video, but with actually data, so us kind of talking about in quantitative terms about what Terry Smith has said, then you can say that actually you would like for us to start a Patreon account. And again, as usual, if you liked the video today, you can consider subscribing and liking the video. And we're going to see you on Friday. Bye-bye.